In a year that had been proclaimed by some to be the year of the great box cinema camera has quickly devolved into the cloud wars as Blackmagic Design, Frame.io, Atomos, and other released several new product designs to connect filmmakers and freelancers more and more to the cloud. With the rise of high-speed internet and even satellite internet, thanks to Starlink, access to cloud collaboration work is becoming more and more accessible and feasible. The implications of all this almost point towards cool new future cameras and features that they could include and the ability for camera to cloud built into the camera. So in this video, we will talk about how that feature might work in the future cameras, maybe even a new Blackmagic camera and you know how Blackmagic already kind of sort of has that ability. So stick around. You fought in the cloud wars? Yes. I was once a Jedi Knight, the same as your father. Do you know what camera to cloud is? Well, I got Frame.io to give me a demonstration of how it works with their new C2C feature they released before NAB. And they showed us a demonstration with an iPhone that had a Panavision lens attached to it for some reason. Well, I'm here with um, Paul from Yeah, when we introduced camera to cloud last year, uh, it was you know limited to a few high-end digital cinema cameras. And this yeah. year we have announced uh, some great new partnerships which bring it to DSLR, HDMI, mirrorless cameras, yep. and even you know the world's most popular cameras, the ones in our pockets, yep, yep. our iPhone and Android <laughs> uh, cameras. Which I see over here, you got this. So this is a crazy setup, right? <laughs> yeah. We got this monster Panavision mm -hmm. lens uh, <laughs> connected to our iPhone <laughs> running Filmic Pro. So, uh, you know, really fun use of a pro lens on, on oh, yeah. an iPhone. And, the images you get out of it are actually I mean, it great. Looks excellent. Should I just do a quick camera to cloud thing here for oh, you? Oh yeah, should you be great. See it? Yeah. yeah, I can just hit record. So now we're recording a shot on yep. the iPhone. I'm going to cut. As soon as I cut, you're going to see it come up here. It's <laughs> going up to the frame of cloud. That's so awesome. So now an editor anywhere in the world can just pull it, can just pull it down into Premiere or whatever app they're using and can start cutting. So that's so awesome. Is that going to proxy files or is that straight? Um... Yeah, that's going to that's a proxy file. Yep. So. With Filmic Pro, we're doing proxies. Um, Filmic also shoots ProRes, yep. so you can relink to the ProRes later. Um, on the other side, we've got an Alexa with a Teradex Serve, yep. and that'll actually do proxies that are HEVC, 4K HDR, nice. up to 85 megabits a second. And at that point, you're like, is it a proxy or is it is something? It like something? <laughs> right, you're just shooting and the stuff's yep. going up there and uh, yep. folks are checking it out and starting to work on it. So you may wonder, if they've got products already to do this, why would Blackmagic have to develop their own system for it? It's an excellent question. And when we asked Atomos, who actually had recently released a product that could send almost any camera, even Z camera files, to Frame.io, camera to cloud collaboration without any issues, but it didn't have Blackmagic design support, um, or was at least fully compatible with it. So we asked them at NAB why this was the case. Yeah, I mean, well, we, we support all cameras, actually. Um, yeah. And I suppose down the, down the Blackmagic route, if they don't have a, uh, an output that you can record, yeah. then it's a bit difficult to record it. I mean, right, exactly. they, they have a yeah. nice monitoring output, which is great for monitoring, yeah. but that might not be the one that you want to record. So that's really the issue along there. Now, I will note that asking this question of Atomos is a bit of a sticky subject as the founders of Atomos were former employees of Black Magic, with whom there is a little bit of bad blood and a lawsuit that we may talk about in a future video. But it wasn't meant in that way when I asked the question about why Black Magic design cameras weren't being listed as compatible on their website. And I feel like they gave a very fair answer to these questions and gave actual good technical reasons as to why it doesn't currently work that well with Blackmagic. And it's primarily that, you know, Blackmagic cameras don't have 10-bit output or 4K output from their HDMI ports, that even if you just use it based on getting proxies to frame IO, it's still an issue because the file names don't match up well, which would be a headache in the back end trying to reconnect everything. So from all this, we can kind of tell that Blackmagic is probably looking at developing their own camera to cloud system with their cameras, especially thinking about how they really have everything from the beginning of production to end production with, you know, their cameras to DaVinci Resolve that all kind of work together. And now that, you know, DaVinci Resolve has 
has all this cloud collaboration, kind of makes sense that the entire product line could soon work in harmony in the cloud. With the Ursa G2 broadcast camera releasing functionality of wireless a video tethering to streaming services, you can start to see that that functionality is already in place in some ways. And Blackmagic Design even alluded to this in our interview with them at NAB, which we linked below if you're interested in seeing the whole interview. But I think in the future, we could see a built-in or at least an attachable camera to cloud feature from Blackmagic Design or some kind of partnership. The tech already seems to be there for them, especially with all the other broadcast stuff that they do. And the software needed to handle it already seems to be there as well. And the storage solutions from Blackmagic to be able to do it as well are already there as they're kind of building up this entire production system that you can go straight through Blackmagic to do everything. Kind of like airy in a way. So it's not a stretch to see this as an inevitable stepping point for black magic. And some of you may question whether or not it makes sense for camera to cloud due to the large sizes from black magic cameras. But with the automatic proxy generation capabilities, black magic has now released with the cloud store and the new DaVinci resolve update. I think the file sizes actually could be mitigated with even frame IO solutions showing, you know, things like 60 megabyte files for an hour of recording through their proxy system. And I wouldn't imagine that black magic's going to be too far off of that, even if it's a little bit more. The other question that pops up a lot is why do we even need this functionality or why would a freelancer need this functionality, you know, based on the amount of work they do or the price of the work they do? Well, time is really the answer. As someone who runs my own business and regularly makes three YouTube videos a week, I'm constantly looking for ways to make my process faster and more efficient so I can get back more of my time, not having to do, you know, mundane tasks that take up a lot of time and mental energy. I mean, imagine having a larger project as a freelancer that is on a really strict timeline and you've got to get this thing edited quickly. Having the ability to have all of your shots upload and to the cloud the instant you're done filming so an assistant editor or even you can start editing immediately, kind of worth it. I travel a lot for work for long video shoots and this would come in very handy if you're on the, like a hard timeline and are working with an assistant editor on a project. You don't have to use spotty hotel Wi-Fi to upload massive files or spend the time having to, you know, convert all your files to proxies when you get back to actually just rest at night. This takes away a lot of the legwork and pair it with one of those nifty $300 audio devices here that we will talk about at some other future date as well. And you can have all of your file projects from audio to video updated and organized for you by the time you get back. So you can just jump into the video editing project instead of trying to sort through everything and get everything connected. It saves a lot of time and is a feature that has endless possibilities of what you could do with it beyond just the scenarios I've mentioned. And at the end of the day, efficiency is key in our world as we seek to grow and manage larger and larger productions on much shorter turnaround basis. But, um, you know, that's not the only feature that a lot of people have been asking for in Blackmagic cameras. And one of them has been, uh, you know, autofocus. And I got a lot of questions about autofocus with Blackmagic cameras. And there are some reasons why I don't see this really happening this year or any time in the future, or even Blackmagic wanting to do it themselves. And I explain that in this video here. So definitely worth a watch.